Welcome back to Bunter's Yard. And today we are adding our light weathering to our Fly Scotsman in wartime black. Um, after I'll well, put that screw back in. Um, so a few people on the uh, since the last video have messaged and commented that this isn't the right model. Now I know that, and I did mention it in the last video. I know this is the, uh, incorrect. This is a later model, but I just like the look of it. And uh, I did say this is not going to be a prototypical thing. Um, but just out of interest, I've been looking on uh, this website, BR Database, and I'll leave the link down below. Now, it just shows that 4472 was on the Scotsman until uh, the beginning of 1946, when it then received number 502, 103, and so on. So um, it was black at that time, and it did carry 4472, the same as our model uh, there. Um, but it also does show that the chimney was fitted in 1959, and then the deflectors of the smoke um, things were fitted in 1961 so I do know it's a later model I do fully appreciate that um, but I just want to do it with 4472 on the side I've never seen a picture of it I'm sure there's some reason in uh, that there isn't a photograph of uh, wartime black 4472 like an original picture if anyone's got any only links then do let me know that's great be good to see that um, also probably the, the numbering um, and the lettering on the uh, on there would have been in plain yellow or plain white and wouldn't have been in this gilt edged block just to save the sign writer a bit of time when he uh, when he painted this on because he had better things to do during the war so um, so yeah it's kind of some of it's right and some of it isn't um, but it's just a model that I wanted to make so let's crack on and get some weathering sorted out So first thing we're going to do is a little bit of dry brushing just to bring out some of the details because we're uh, all in black and there's no other colours. Um, just wanted to bring out some of the uh, like the the, um, the rivet detail and so on on this uh, on the body. Now we're not trying to uh, sort of simulate it being worn and uh, so we're not using a metal colour. This, this is a grey just to create like a edge highlight. So uh, we're dry brushing, if you've not done that before, really, really uh, cool technique. It's, uh, it just, uh, it's a really good effect, quite a cheap effect. So you pop some paint on your brush, just a little bit on the tip, and then you uh, rub it off on a, on a tissue like we've got here uh, as much as you can. Uh, you'll never get it all off, which is the idea. You just can have a tiny, tiny amount. And if you brush over the, uh, the ends of the uh, brush, it's just going to catch on any sort of raised detail. And, uh, and that leaves that, that little edge highlight, so it's good for little wear and tear. But this uh, on this particular one, we're just trying to bring out some of that detail. Now it looks a little bit um, brighter than we'd, uh, we'd kind of want, but once we've got the other colours on, we're going to lose a lot of this again anyway. But it's just, like I say, just to leave those uh, rivet details and pick out the hand rolls and so on, because they would have all been black during the war time, I understand. Now you want as much as you can to uh, go sort of in an up and down motion with this one because um, if you get any of a paint on the on the body of the loco, it is going to look like a sort of, uh, a water marker or a streak. Um, but obviously, with uh, with dry brushing, you need to go at ninety degrees to the uh, detail you're trying to highlight. So on some of these, we do need to go from side to side. So laterally along the uh, along the model, uh, so just take extra care if you do that because if you get any marks that go from left to right, um, unless you can disguise them, they're going to look a little bit out of place. So we're just going to go around the whole model, and we're just going to carry on picking out all these details. Um, you don't need to use uh, grey; it's just I'm using grey just to highlight this. You can use silver if you're looking for like a worn paint effect. Or uh, rust tone, or anything you like, really. Just as whatever suits the model that you're working on. But we're just using this just to get like a highlight effect, just so that um, we can see some of that lovely detail from uh, afar.
So we've mixed up uh, dark rust color. This is Panzer Ace's color um, with black, just to make a dirty, uh, greasy, dark color. Really, just for the wheels and the uh, all the running gear, the comrades, and so on. And we're not going to go too heavy on those uh, on all the uh, the mechanicals there. We don't want to clog it up with paint and uh, cause an issue later on uh, with running. So uh, we're going fairly, fairly light on that. And the wheels we're going to colour in completely. And this is a tender drive um, uh, model, this particular one. So I can move the wheels around and uh, make sure I get underneath um, all, the, all the rods that sort of obscure the wheels. So make sure we cover the whole of the wheel. And we'll clean them off a bit later on. We won't worry about it just for a second. And then once that's uh, partially dried, we're just going to use a brush, just to brush a little bit off, just so it doesn't look too, uh, so we do want it too, too uniform in, in colour. So it just looks like there's, uh, you know, people have been doing some work and rub some of the grease and grime off. And then we're going to go over the whole thing again, um, or in parts anyway, but this time just with uh, solid uh, black, uh, the Vallejo here, model black. And we're just concentrating really mainly on the on the uh, where the bolts and uh, where the joins would be. And then once that dry, we'll leave it we'll take a few minutes to dry, and then we'll again we'll brush it off just a little bit just to give a worn effect. And while the paint's still fresh, it's probably an idea just to clean these wheels off. So um, we're just using on this cotton bud uh, airbrush cleaner, which is as good a solvent as any. You can use many things, even just water would uh, would probably work anyway. So any uh, self-respecting steam engine wouldn't look right without any water streaks. So we're going to use a color called sand and I would only use white because uh because it's too well obviously against black it's gonna be very contrasty and white pigment is quite sort of large and we won't get a particularly smooth effect it comes out a bit splattery so with the airbrush we've turned the pressure way way down um to sort of 10 or even less psi and we've taken the little guard off the front so it's just the bare needle you can just see there and then very very lightly we're just going to spray on these now the, the reason i'm spraying it on my finger is to give myself like a muscle memory of where that sort of bite point is and where it's going to start painting um it's a really sort of fine line so if you go too far it'll just suddenly spurt out and you have a whole mess on you on your loco you don't want that so uh that's just me practicing muscle memory and i do that quite a lot you'll see that from time to time So we need a, a kind of logic of where the water streaks are going to be rather than just being in the middle of nowhere. They're never going to be in the middle of a panel. Um, so my theory is, is that because these, um, this like is, is a calcium deposit where the water has dried quickly because the, the tank um, is hot, um, the water will evaporate leaving these white streaks. And we're just looking for the places where water would probably collect and then run down so around these um you know these places and the whistles and uh, and so on the other thing with uh, using the airbrush this way without the nozzle on is that it will block um quite um 
quite frequently. So you just need to make sure you clean off that needle very carefully from time to time. So once the white's on, we're going to use um, just this uh, US Earth color. It's just our first layer of sort of weathering. It just adds a, a brown sort of dirt grime effect. And we're really not going uh, that heavy. The brush is still really low pressure. You can see hardly anything that's coming out, but it's just enough just along the edge of that um, of that um, plate there. I'm not sure it's got a real name and I can't think of what it is in a second. Someone will enlighten me. Um, anyway, so we're going very lightly and just above those uh, sort of wheel arches and uh, yeah, along the top of the chassis, that sort of thing. And then around the cab, there's going to be a little build up there. So just, just the places where you think this is going to build in. And then maybe we can do a few sort of vertical streaks, maybe mirroring the uh, the, the white um, water streaks as well. same on the on the tender as well so we're all along the um, the chassis the axle boxes and so on and then we're just doing a little layer uh, along the bottom of the of the tender body just to sort of tie it in so it doesn't look like just sitting there um, and then a little dusting across the top as well just trying to give flying scott spend a, a kind of little bit of respect really um, it's a bit of an iconic loco obviously it's uh if anyone's if you ask anybody to name a loco that would be the first one that most people even the people who don't know about trains would probably know um of our next um color is a color called smoke from uh, vallejo and it's got like a translucent so it doesn't actually cover it and um it just gives like a, a a dirty smoke haze type effect you can see it's like brown on the top right next on to some weathering powders so uh, the most of this is going to be done with um, the Humbra weathering powders dark earth which you use for quite a lot and there will be a few other colors in there some dark rust and uh, that's pretty much um, all that we're going to use um, if this is um, sort of 1944 1945 the paintwork would only be a year or so old so it's not going to be that bad um, I'm sure I mean it would have worked hard and it would have got dirty anyway but uh, we're just going to not go too too wild with the uh, with the weathering on this one famous last words but there we go give them my best shot uh, so a little bit of dark rust on those wheel are they balances or weights I'm, I'm sure they've got a proper name uh, again if you know what it is uh, just let me know down below in the comments then I don't make a fool of myself each time I talk about them just some general sort of weathering powders again on that um, plate there and just use a small amount of powder on your brush so just uh, I'll leave it in there in the palette as you can see over the back there you've seen that before in other videos that we've done uh, just a little touch on there and then sort of brush most of it off uh, with a part with the exception of this uh, this kind of white powder um, this particular one um, 
kind of washes away really quickly so I, I tend to put more white on the need most of it will go and be hardly visible um, it just seems to just completely sort of wash away as soon as you put a varnish over the top most of it will go so our varnish is uh, again a matte varnish from Vallejo we don't think too shiny so matte is ideal for this and um, I'm just going to give this uh, a once over and then we're going to stop and uh, do something else just make sure we get all in the wheels especially the places where the weathering powder has been added just makes it a bit more durable and sort of fixes them into place and the effect will sort of lessen off now that we've put this on some of the colors become less vibrant and sort of merge in together which is what we want and you can see that white has kind of disappeared there's a little blob there so we'll uh, add some more into that in a little bit there we go and then we can re-varnish over that and uh, we'll get a little bit more to stay this time that just sort of simulates ash or something maybe on the front now And for around the uh, chimneys, what we're going to use is this um, Humbrol um, black weathering powder. Now, because the varnish is wet, and that's why I'm touching this on afterwards, it just sticks at the top of the varnish and it will give us a bit of more of a textured effect um, rather than just putting it on and then varnishing over the top when we lose a lot of it. Now, we're going to re varnish it again in a moment but a lot of this um, powder will stay and I say give us a slight textured effect so just trying to simulate you know, or maybe a, a kind of pattern that it, you would get so it would streak back along the loco and then we're going to uh, a lot of it comes off as you can see there but it still leaves that kind of sooty effect you can just see it um, which is just what he's after. There's a little mist there, we're just going to touch that in and then re varnish it again. And then the same for the tender. So we're just going to quickly give this his first coat of varnish. Generally, we give this two coats, so we'll let it dry for an hour or so and then we'll give it a second coat. Now the coal I kind of I toyed with maybe cutting it out and filling it with uh, all real coal or just putting a layer of coal on top it's quite high so I thought more coal on it would be just too tall so rather than cutting it out I thought we would just use the uh, the same as we've done around the around the chimney so it's the varnish is slightly tacky we're adding the uh, yeah the um, black weathering powder now just going to touch that in and then we'll varnish over it again in a moment and most of it will stay on it just looks a little bit better than that bare plastic okay, add a bit of white in there as well So be very careful with the pressure on the airbrush because it will just blow everything away. So you need to be really, really careful. And that's it, pretty much done. Um, if you're um, new to uh, sort of viewing the, the channel please uh, do subscribe if you've uh, not already done so um, a special uh, welcome to everybody that's joined us since the last video here's our particular uh, version of the Lion Scotsman I um, hope you enjoyed this video hope it was useful and hope to see you 
in the next video coming up soon. Bye for now. Stay safe. Thank you.